three main reasons why why now is such an important time for uh, lasers to actually pick up and, and be uh, integrated into our operating forces. One is the gain in the technology uh, maturation. There's been major advances in laser types, specifically solid state lasers moving from chemical. Solid state are uh, much more important because they essentially have an unlimited magazine well. They essentially have unlimited ammunition as long as they're plugged into the proper power source for chemical lasers uh, deplete depending on uh, which fuels you put into it. Um, there's also been uh, uh, recent demonstrations uh, and gains in addressing technical challenges. The three main technical challenges are scaling the power, beam efficiency, and beam forming. And when you think about who's going to be using the lasers with the Navy being loaded on Navy ships, it's a very harsh environment with the salt spray, with the uh, atmospheric attenuation. So the lasers need to be a specific, uh, essentially uh, made in a specific way for the U.S. Navy. For the Air Force, they have another issue, and that's the jitters of the aircraft. When you're flying, you realize the vibrations of the aircraft. If you mount a laser on an aircraft, you're going to have to deal with those vibrations, especially if you're concentrating a laser. So there's been a number of uh, recent technology advances to help address those technical issues. So that's the first, the first piece. Second piece is the evolving threat environment. You have actors like China building up their um, uh, strategic missile and anti-ship missile stores. Uh, you have Iran, which is using uh, uh, UAVs and fast boats for their asymmetric defenses. So you have these threats that are essentially becoming distributed. And that leads into the third piece, which is the fact that we have a bad business case from the U.S. perspective. The U.S. Department of Defense has a bad business case of shooting a missile down with a missile. We make very expensive things in the United States, and the missiles we use for counter battery are one of them. And the fact of the matter is our missiles cost between $1 and $3 million a piece, and it doesn't make sense for us to shoot down rockets and artillery that the enemy is paying $10,000 for with a million-dollar missile. It doesn't make economic sense. So the, solution, so the solutions like lasers, they're uniquely capable of solving these cost concerns because it's a negligible cost per shot. When you think about the cost of a shot per laser compared to a cost of shooting in a, a ballistic missile off, it's a lot cheaper. So that bad business case, that's really one of the big drivers when we think about why lasers are starting to pick up and why it's starting to gain steam within the defense community. So that's why they've really accelerated funding in the last two years, and they've pivoted at least from the U.S. government standpoint, more from a science and technology engineering to developing and testing efforts. 